Hey, hello and welcome back to this second video of my course Grasshopper Fundamentals. This is a beginner's course, but if you want to freshen up your knowledge about Grasshopper and if you know Grasshopper already a bit, then you're more than welcome to join. And by the way, everybody is invited to join. I make no exceptions. And on that note, it's actually lately, it's really difficult to think of anything else if there are constant reports of attacks, terror, people displaced, children killed every second. It is insane and it really hurts and it's so unnecessary. So my thoughts are really with all these innocent civilians who are in this absolute horrible situation. I cannot even imagine. And it's almost trivial to do a YouTube video on a parametric modeling system. I hope the only thing I can provide is positively provide as being a role model and making no exceptions and really invite anyone, everybody to, to contribute. There is another, hopefully a po more, po on a more positive note. Um, I want to say that I have three new members and uh, yeah, I want to uh, welcome them, of course. So we have here Manuel Körner. I assume either from Germany or Austria. Welcome. Great that you joined. Um, and I can see that you uploaded uh, two videos. One five years ago, one seven years ago. I actually looked at these videos. Quite interesting. Because seven years ago. So this is about the supermarket of the future. And it's really interesting that just around the corner. There is actually a, a zero waste supermarket. Where it's actually pretty much uh, what's described in that video. So everybody... Watch this, it's very interesting. It's a very nice animation, by the way, also. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, so I go to this shop pretty much every week and uh, I get, I bring my, you know, Tupperware and then, or, or you know, glasses and, or, or bottles and refill what I ever need to refill. So it's pretty good, pretty cool. So yeah, very happy you joined. Guten Tag. Let me know if you need any, anything. It's very interesting. I have members and, supporting me i love it you can also talk to me you can talk to me and ask me questions um please do next uh we have carolina ventura actually i think i have four four new subscribers four new members sorry so carolina ventura she has actually no playlist no nothing in there no about you probably just joined for me i'm really pleased and thanks for the support and then we have green aroma i actually I mean, I love it. Going on her uh, profile, the playlist is my honeybee playlist. What, what can I say? Um, thank you so much. And uh, Green Aroma had some questions. I hope I hope I answered your questions. And if you have more, please let me know. Um, I, have, I get a lot of emails. So sometimes I just don't. So if, if you have sent me something and I missed it, please just uh, get back to me, you know, and, and ask me again. And we have Du Tubinger. Du Tubinger? Hmm. Du Tubinger. It's hard to tell where Du Tubinger is from. But um, what I really like here is, I mean, you are, you really like playlists. Definitely. So you have a huge amount of playlists. Love it. Uh, Metal and Grindcore. Yeah, me too. Any Morricone. Yes, me too. Um, pretty much. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, we We kind of overlap with interests uh, quite a lot so also for you thanks for joining and again also for you let me know if there's anything i can help with i think germany i think germany now i see it i was actually looking for clues looking for clues on where you come from and i now i see this here probably similar age as me as well nevertheless Thanks for joining, thanks for the support, and let's jump into the second video, Grasshopper Fundamentals. Strömungslehre, yeah, was ist eine Firma? All right, here we are. This is the fear of the artist with the blank canvas when nothing is there and you don't know what to do. But fear not, you cannot do anything wrong, really. Um, I learned Grasshopper pretty much through playing around. I read the Grasshopper Primer and I watched countless tutorials, of course, online, YouTube. Um, and yeah, sometimes your computer will crash or let's say not your computer, but Rhino will crash or Grasshopper actually will crash. And then you 
need to restart Rhino in order to go back. That happens. That happened to me a lot in the past. It's part of the learning process, of course, and it still happens sometimes. Other than that, nothing can really happen. Your, your computer will not explode. So I always recommend to save regularly. That, of course, helps. And yeah, so we in the last video, we looked at the user interface. Just I want to just repeat one thing here. As you can see, I have a lot of different tool, tool sets here, which you will not have when you installed Grasshopper uh, Rhino. Um, but don't worry, this is just, most of this is just third plugin, third party plugin. And we will look at how to install these probably towards the end of the course. And I have a lot here, but I, I only use a fraction to be fair. Sometimes I just install something just to test it out. Or I mean, human, for example, I use maybe one or two elements and then I should actually try more. There's a, mo a lot of interesting stuff in here. Yeah, so we will cover that at some point. What you should have is this um, first one, params. It says params here. I guess it comes from parameters, but <laughs> don't. I actually, it's the first time that I realized that it's params and not parameters. Nevertheless, so you should have this one. Geometry, primitive, input, utility. And you will probably not have this one. You only have this one if you have uh, lands design installed. And you might also not have this bifocals. This is just uh, also third-party plugins. This is a very simple tool. It's really not, you don't need to worry about this. Um, I will explain what it does. Math, you should have math. You should have the sets, uh, vectors, curves, surfaces, meshes, intersections, transformations, and display. These are the, these are the standard tools you have when you installed Rhino. And Grasshopper comes with Rhino anyway, so you don't need to install it separately. Um, where to start? I think we will start here with um, the geometry and maybe look a bit uh, into here. There's a lot of, there's still a lot to cover actually from on how to handle uh, tools or items on the canvas. There's a lot of things we were not able to cover last time because they need to actually, they need to explain within uh, an actual problem. So I guess, yeah, I think basic shapes and some parameters and inputs, that's what we're going to look in today. Um, so these these first objects here, and by the way, I, I never have used all of them. I used some of them pretty much. Yeah, I, I used quite a lot of them, really. But some of them I use really often and others I don't use that much. And let's start with the first one. The first one is point. And if I click on point, I can drag it over here, then it's here. When this is orange, orange means there is just no parameter in there. So it's, and then you have this like small little um, icon here where it gives you a warning. It says floating parameter point failed to collect data. So this, I call these objects here containers. They're containers, they can hold one or more items. And in that, in that point, in that case, it's uh, points. You have an input and you have an output. That means you can input points and you can output points. Now, how to get to a point? How do, and this is like the, the first fundamental question. How do we actually connect Rhino with Grasshopper? So there's nothing in Grasshopper, in Rhino, there's nothing in inside here in that object. Well, if we click here, if we right click here, then we get a drop down menu that gives us different options. And I explain this, this upper ones later on. Uh, you have the, the runtime warning again. This is the warning we just looked at. There's preview, enable, bake, runtime. And then you have uh, wire display. And we'll explain all these at some point. But then you have here set one point or set multiple points. Set one point. If I click on this, I can set a point. Now I have a point here. It's, it's a point in Rhino. And I can move this point actually. It's in, Grasshop, uh, in Rhino with my gumball. I can move it around in space, but it's actually not in here. It's not, it's referenced in my viewport in Rhino, but it's, it actually lives in this container. If I draw, if I put the a point here, you see the difference. I can actually, uh, I can actually move this around and I can actually and grab it. But this one I cannot grab. I need to actually touch this here. Then I can move it around. Nevertheless, if I have this point here in, Grasshopper in Rhino, 
and let's say I have a second object here, second point object, I can refer this. If I now set one point by, if this was uh, selected, so I selected the point and then I was setting one point. Now the point in Rhino, which I can grab here, is also in here, referenced. Now if I click here, I can actually not move it. If I click this one, I can move it around. So there are two different ways of how you reference things. One is existing points in Gra in Rhino, and and they all these tools all work a bit different. But this is a fundamental understanding you need to have. So you can work with existing geometry you have in your Rhino file, or you can generate things. They don't really exist in your Rhino file. They only exist in your Grasshopper. But you can save the grasshopper file as we showed last time and you can also bake that point into rhino so we can go here and say bake i will not do that now i can also set multiple points you need to play it with this a bit um i can for example set multiple points here and then i can do the same again i can just go here and set multiple points and then I grab all these and say enter and then i have my multiple points here and you can see they are highlighted i just changed different color so you can see it better so explain a bit more on this but maybe with a different object so let's let's say we have we have um a b wrap it's a container where you can store different objects in that case they're called boundary boundary representations it's yeah it's for me it's just um a closed polysurface or a surface or a polysurface or a closed polysurface that you can all use. I just use a box, although you could use this tool here. Anyway, I created this box and now I'm going to refer this box. I'm going to bring this box into Grasshopper. Yeah, now here I can move this around, but it turned, turned somehow green. And if I now... And you can see whenever I touch this, it's green. If I click outside here, then it becomes red or, or pinkish, you know. I can grab this here and close it. And you can see that now it only shows this red box without without the ground surface, which normally you see when you're in Arctic view. Are we in Arctic view? Yes. Or in rendered view. We can also use rendered view. If I open this again, you can see, okay, now we have a shadow, we have a ground plane. If I, if I remove this again, ground plane is gone because Rhino doesn't really know that there are things in in here or that this is in here. I can I will close this. I will I will hide this for now. Now if I click here, you see it's gonna turn green again. And so are my points. All the points I'm selecting these multiple points. As soon as I select this tool, they highlighted green. And the same with this one, this point here, Arctic View is better. This point is green and this one is green as well if i for example now delete this one then this becomes orange again i'm going back now what i want to explain is here these additional parameters you can change not everything i will not um i will not go through these these are more advanced they will come later in the course but these ones are very important and a lot of people don't get it they, a lot of people don't understand preview the enabled and the, the, ba the big yes uh, but the preview and enabling is as as crazy as it sounds but it seems like it's a very hard concept to understand so preview at the moment we preview it we can see that there is a box if we click on preview it's gone so now preview is the preview is off it's turned off. However, box is still there. The box is still there. So if I put this, if I put another B wrap container and I and I combine these, then the box is there. Now I actually have two boxes. I have one box in here, one box in here. This is a copy of the first one. It's it's really crucial to understand that because a lot of people they they put scripts together and then they realize ah oh, I can see things several times and I, I show you what I mean. So one box is in here, one box is in here, but the preview is off. The preview of the first one is off, uh, here it's on. So if I go here, preview is on, the preview is off, so we can't see it. If I turn on the preview, then, then this just turned darker. It's it's now a mix between red and green, because one one is selected, one is not selected. If I select both, it's completely green. 
if I, if I, if I sec if I don't select any one, it's completely red. If I select one of it, it's it becomes brownish. So there are two boxes in there. I can also show you that by using a method here, a transform method, move, and we'll cover this later again. So don't worry. It's the geometry I want to move and um, just put, I just create some, something here just to, so you see. And now you see that two boxes in there. One is this and the other one is this. And <laughs> actually now we have three boxes. So we have one here, we have one here, which is also this one. So actually we don't need this one. I hope it makes more sense. So it's a linear kind of flow, right? So we have, we have a box, we take the box, we make a copy of the box and we change the location of the box with this tool here. And because we changed the location of the box, we have the copy already moved and we could put another um, BRAP container here and connect this. And then now we have three boxes. One is in here, one is this one, and then the moved one, and then we have another one, which is a copy of that. So we could turn this, we could click on this and say preview off, then we can't see this one. And if I don't wanna see this one, I can just go here and click on preview off. Now we have only this one and we can move it up and down with the slider. It's, it's very important to understand because what I'm gonna show you now is something completely different, is enabling. Enabling means the script ran or doesn't. If, if for example, I go here, if I go here and I click here, enable, then there's no box anywhere. It's just my box here in Grasshopper. It's the only box I have, but it's not in, it's not in here. So this tool is not enabled, and that's why there's no box in here or in here. So the output here is turned off, and you can also see that by this orange uh, line. So. Is the, it's a very important aspect of Grasshopper because if you, for example, work in Ladybug and you have geometry and you have several copies of the same thing overlapping on each other and you have outputs where you want to read the colors which are outputted, then you write then you write a comment to me and say, oh, why I see this red or green? This is exactly why. Because you didn't understand this output or this enabling or previewing. I could now go back here and, and enable it. Then my box is back. This box is back and this one. So we have my the original one, but now we don't have a preview. Preview is off. Preview is off. Now it's on. So you can see uh, the box is there. You can turn the preview off. Don't want to see that. I don't want to see this one. Or I want to see it and I don't want to enable this one. If I, if I disable this, then this box doesn't exist. So this container now doesn't have any information. Floating parameter, floating parameter, BRAP, failed to collect data. So basically the same what we had before here. Oh, you can clear values also, by the way. So you can go here and say clear values, then uh, it will kick out all the, all the data it has collected clear values so this is the same same warning floating parameter point failed to collect data floating parameter prep failed to collect to collect data so it's the same it's because this is disabled i can enable it and i can even preview it and now this again we have the same problem as before this is green and if i collect select everything then everything is green 